and you saw the reaction from players, from players he played with and competed against, from young players who he never played with, some of whom, you know, held very tightly to text messages or conversations or workouts with him. He took great pride at the end of his career and then here in retirement and bringing guys out to Southern California, working with him, like a Jason Tatum in Boston. You know, he and Kawhi spent time together and and, and many others. And, and I think, I don't know that there's another player uh, of, of any generation um, who commanded the just, you know, certainly Jordan was right there with him and right. LeBron – uh, will be remembered um, for a lot of that. But Kobe was just a player and an entity and a really kind of a force of nature that everybody who picked up a basketball wanted to get close to, wanted to touch, um, wanted to have him. You know, Dwayne Wade said something yesterday I, I saw on his Instagram, and I, and I thought encapsulated it of the idea that how important it was to earn Kobe's respect. And, and I think that was the case, not just with players, but coaches. I remember Steve Clifford talking about the coach in Orlando. He was an assistant in L.A. for one year. And talking about when you did your uh, a walkthrough on a pregame or a shoot-around where you were doing giving the scouting report to the players, he'd say, you better know exactly what you were talking about. Because if you hadn't done your work and you were BSing, Kobe would call you out on it. He knew you didn't know. And the coaches felt that around him. Talking to Adrian Wojnarowski with us, our senior ESPN uh, NBA insider. By the way, a special Woj pod with Ramona Shelburne, and Woj is now available wherever you get your podcast. And, and I heard Tim Legler say this on the radio yesterday, kind of in reference that Kobe never cheated the game. There was there was never anything left. He poured all of himself into this, and that was the intense character. And then we saw, you know, it, Gianna, who was unfortunately a part of this tragedy, his daughter, thirteen uh, year old daughter that was lost in this, in seeing their relationship blossom. How had you seen as someone who would cover this, Kobe kind of softened to become more of this, you know, uh, mentor to all these young NBA players and this father very much in the public light? Yeah, I mean, the Kobe that I knew when he was, you know, before, or I guess right when he started to have a family, so Jana was 13 years old, and, and I probably got to start to know him 2007, 2008, when I started covering the NBA, um, was very selfish and self-centered and probably didn't, there wasn't a focus on really anybody but himself. I mean, there really wasn't. He'd tell you that. And I do think uh, fatherhood uh, greatly impacted him. There's no question about it. And that's true probably of a lot of people, a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And so he, he poured everything into basketball, and he still did. There's not like he he always put in the work, um, did it in a uh, obsessive way. Kobe was, Kobe went to extremes in in almost every part of his life. He did, and there was an obsessive greatness to him, and um, part of that made him a difficult teammate, difficult to coach at times. Yeah. But you know, he never was going to ask anybody else around him to do anything that he hadn't put the work in to do the preparation. And uh, as driven and as driven as anyone I've ever met in any any walk of life. You know, I'm glad you said that as Woj is with us this morning, because I'll never forget when the NBA All-Star Game was in New York in 1998. And they were talking to Carl Malone and some other people about this new breed of NBA player. And Malone told the story of he went to set a pick for Kobe in the All-Star Game. And Kobe said, no, I got him. And Malone was like... Oh, okay, fine. If that's that, that's the way you want to go about it, I guess. You know, and he was sort of taken aback that I'm trying to help you. And Colby was like, "I got it, bro. I'm good." And that's the way he started. And he then ended up becoming a completely different player by realizing, as Jerry West said on the special last night, "You're not going to go through five people and dunk and win as a team." You know, remember Kobe um, after the back to back with the, the second, the, the second champ, the second two championships he won with Pau Gasol. And we went to dinner in Minnesota November of that year and had a long talk. I was rereading the, the piece yesterday. And he was talking about his leadership style and that he had realized that he had realized over time, and, and I think he did so when 
you know, the thing that he was proud of, I remember him telling me that day, was that I was the only guy who won championships as a sidekick with with Shaq and then won championships as the main guy and, and that he evolved into that and that was important to him. But his leadership style that he, you know, his point was, I had to learn to, even if I was out injured or not playing, that my team could function without me because I prepared everybody around me to do it. He saw leadership in a different way, how he interacted with Pau Gasol, who was a very different co-star personality Correct. than Shaq was or Andrew Bynum was. And he knew at times where he wanted to be harder on Pau, but knew Pau, Pau may not react as well to that and. There was an evolution in his thinking and, and how he approached uh, trying to lead a team. That's always going to be one of the what ifs with Kobe, even though he won championships after he and Shaq won the three in a row. It's like, yeah. what if those two had stayed together? As Adrian Wojnarowski joined us, our ESPN NBA senior insider on Golik and Wingo. So we all we all have a, a kind of a bio. We all have something, our names, comma, and then our our history, our legacy. What What is Kobe Bryant, comma, what do you say? Hey, one of the most important players in, in, in certainly modern NBA history, but in NBA history, he did it for the Lakers. He did it for the most popular team uh, for 20 years and won five titles. And the impact he had, not just in the States, but in, in China where he was very popular. But remember, he grew up in Europe. He grew up in Italy. He grew up idolizing Mike right. D'Antoni, right. who was playing at pro ball in Italy then. Wow. And uh, Oscar Schmidt, I remember being at the Olympics. He met Oscar Schmidt, the great uh, Brazilian. Brazilian and he knew all those guys. He came to the game differently. He, when he, his dad, uh, uh, Jelly, Joe Jellybean mm-hmm. Bryant, played over there, and then they moved back to Philly for the end of high school. And so Kobe's impact is really somebody who was – um, and, and every corner of the world was celebrated, renowned, and and I think all of those people, all of those fans, all of those parts of the basketball community, you know, felt it so strongly yesterday.